Alright, what is going on? Welcome back to the channel. Alright, so we are here in Washington, D.C., the nation's capital, and we are testing out FSD. And we're going to see how it gets us through some traffic, hopefully not too much. And uh, if you're familiar, we are here on 295 South one of the worst roads you can be on it's just like look no shoulder nothing like that it's um yeah if you're from this area you know 295 south is just terrible but anyways this is one of the only ways coming from 50 to get through dc we're actually trying to get into arlington right now so we are going around and uh we're gonna see how fsd handles itself in a situation like this so all you got to do is buckle up and uh, sit back and see how it does. And right now, the way this is being controlled is completely by cameras. So, saw that red car, the way it turned in, the car saw it as well too. And the way you can tell is what shows up on the visualization here. I mean, the way I look at it is like, <clears throat> you're almost getting two views of the road now. Like, as, you know, human driving, you can only see what's in front of you. But now, you can actually see a little bit further, thanks to the cameras. And, uh, you know, once you, people realize, too, like, when you get up and close to cars, this switch over switches over to uh, another system, which detects how close the cars are to you. And, uh, you know, when you're in situations and parking lots and cars are super close and someone's backing up and this and that and these are like inevitable events you can see how much the FSD visualization comes into play and it's you know it's a little frustrating that they lock a lot of it with you know if you don't buy FSD because um, it goes to show like the car is definitely capable right but at the same time they're they're asking you how you're going to use the car and if you choose to drive it yourself then there's autopilot available which kind of helps you lane keep you know which is actually standard on all new cars now so it's pretty great that you know they offer that but once you realize how much more the car has capability of then you start to ask yourself like is this you know yeah, th there's a lot more to it, and I'm, I'm learning that day by day, and uh, FSD definitely does its thing, and it comes in clutch in certain situations, and it's not saying to a point where we all need to sit back and rely on AI to drive now, but no, if you can learn how to use it just, you know, in situations where it could be helpful to you, then you're going to find yourself using it a lot. Um, it's just easy math you know at the same time it's not you know you never become complacent that's kind of a rule in life in general I don't have to be the one to tell you guys that but at the same time you know you never become complacent sitting on behind the wheel of FSD you always need to be watching what's going on around you and be prepared to take over at any given moment if you've watched some of my past videos I always take over and uh, when you're behind the wheel in any given situation, you know, anything can happen. And just because you're seeing me drive down 295 with FSD working as it is, doesn't mean that if you use it, it's going to work exactly in the same way. You know, everything is variable based. So it really depends on all of that. But it's really exciting to see how far along Tesla has come. And, you know, with all their talks about Robo Taxi. You know, this is a clear-cut kind of idea of what that's going to be like. You know, just so you can get a sense of it now. Um, and it works, but, you know, there, it works, does have limitations. So, you know, I'm, of course, always awaiting the latest update. And that's something that they constantly do since I've had the car. You know, they're always looking to improve. So, you know, there's only so much data that could collect at once and improve it I guess you know they they try to pride themselves in not holding back like you know how some car companies you know 
when it comes to stuff like they hold back on the technology um, you know so they can milk it for years but you know everyone is at Tesla's neck when it comes to safety and FSD and putting out the right software for everyone to use because it, it's hard to do a one-size-fits-all when it comes to driving not everyone drives the same you know so it has to really work in like situation based and that's the beauty of it it's starting to use the neural nets and the camera and uh, actually react based on you know its surroundings and uh, it's not just you know a copy paste for everyone so once you realize that the, it's also <clears throat> watching you you know at all times it's, it's attentive based so if you're you know doing things in the car that you're not supposed to it's gonna flash at you but if you are you know just soon as I said it there I got the neck but if you are then you're, you're good you know and it, it actually can go like <clears throat> 10 plus minutes sometimes without bothering me <clears throat> so yeah with all that being said I mean it, it comes you know how you use it you know it's it's really designed for attentive users it's not designed to be taken advantage of and sit in the back seat oh I just saw someone's wiper blade on the floor imagine if that was a cyber truck wiper blade then I probably would have definitely ran over it but thankfully I didn't and yeah just like that I mean this makes traffic a whole lot better too because first of all traffic sucks and if you're from the DMV you know that more than anyone and uh, yeah when you're able to sit through like autopilot <clears throat> lanes like this you know I don't know what you're really getting out of that gas pedal but at the same time if I'm at an open road you know I'm driving the car which is really why I scratch my head when they talk about oh we're gonna get rid of the steering wheel you know they want to make it all phone based so that way you know it's completely in control by them all right so much for that once again just my point again what you what really you gonna do with that gas pedal so yeah that's another reason why you know I think FSD is a really nice thing to have and uh, you know in this situation autopilot would work just fine and uh, but at the same time you know once you start taking exits and this and that that's where FSD comes back into play so it really comes down to the user you know everyone's different not everyone's gonna try to use it 100% of the time I don't either I drive a lot you know believe it or not as much as you see the videos I, I do drive a lot I just try to record moments where this is something new to me, you know, and uh, I try to share that with everyone because that's the first time I'm testing out this area with this software and seeing how it reacts to my surroundings. So, I, you know, this way I can get a sense of how it, you know, works and then feel a little bit better. Also notice that I'm upping my speed here a little bit to 56. And this is where the auto max actually shifted back to highway mode, which is interesting on 295. Uh, but yeah, here we go. We're going to try to get on to 395 now. And here we go with the lane change. And very nice job scooting me in to this side uh, without, you know, being in the way of any driver right there. It did such a nice job. And having that quick acceleration allows it to do that. And uh, yeah, they, they really designed a beast around the Model 3. Model Y is the same thing. If, if you know, if you've got a family, Model Y is the way to go right now. There's no question about that. It's just a, a, an amazing vehicle, and it, it's just a, it does a lot, and it has so much room in there. If you need all that room, then yeah. Hopefully, you enjoyed this drive. This was definitely a fun one. Um, now we're starting to pick up speed a little bit. Here we go with the exit. So choosing right to state on route. So just like that indicator. And notice how it shifted into the right lane. We're going towards downtown. And yeah, FSD is really just coming in clutch left and right. And like I said, we are on our way to Arlington. So we're just trying to scoot through DC real quick. And uh, hopefully we can catch some of the monuments and whatnot coming up here. Because this is like the show all when it comes to DC. 
see. So here we go. Really nice job taking that exit. Ooh, very nice job there. All right, so now we're officially on 395 and we have a little bit more shoulder room, uh, but not that much actually. You can see it, it's just like crazy here in DC when it comes to the shoulder. There's almost like none. So you get like a little inch there, you know, but it is like that here in DC. So, you know, you've been on these roads, you know. Here we go with the bridge, sharp turn. FSD slowed down beautifully, trying to switch lanes in the middle of the turn, and it does it with grace. It's not something I probably would have done, I would, you know, but still, I'm not mad at that, that move. You can see the monument straight ahead. Uh, really amazing day out here in the DMV, other than it's 102 degrees. It's so hot, I've got the AC on blast. It's just incredibly hot. Um, I guess, you know, we're going through some kind of not just DC, I'm sure the whole, most of the country is too, so yeah, it's, it's scorching out there. Uh, definitely glad to be here in the AC, 